Hello, welcome to Develop Diary number three, yay, list box example. Really, 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 really short version. All right, so here's my list box. It's got stuff in it. You can click things, you can double click it, it'll run a delegate. And that delegate is currently logging information about what I just clicked, along with a bunch of other log information that I didn't clean up, so the logs will be messy. Anyways, so here's some data, and these are just integers, but they're actually stored as strings, they're just randomly generated, and uh, if you click the headers, they can be sorted by alphabetical goodness, and if you click the begin, they can be sorted in descending order, it toggles descending to descending, depending on if it's the first or second time you click, blah blah blah, it just flips a bullion, and uh, these fields can be added to or manipulated at runtime, in fact, they are built at runtime because I hate UI scenes. This isn't actually a UI scene. It's a can it's an object that uses canvas a lot. It's called from the HUD. But I call it a UI scene because I named the class a UI scene because I am a little bit mad about UI scenes. Alright, so this is working. And uh this list box example up here, that's actually a actually a text element and this is a this whole gray thing in the middle, that's a that's a list box element, the thing in the background, that's a rectangle element. And these are elements derived from object ABUI element, not from the whole UI root thing. That stuff is annoying and stupid, and I hate it. And it's going to be phased out anyway in, for, in favor of scale form. So I figured, why not just make code that will work without UI scene? And uh, even though this does you rely on UI scene just to open a class thing, that, that can be easily be recoded and things like that. It just takes a little bit more time to do all that. And I'd rather just want a working field box right now. Now, this is a list, list box example, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the code. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and open up my list box example UI scene. Wherever that is, that is... I don't know, where, there it is. Alright, so here's my list box example, and uh, it's only uh, 97 lines of code, and uh, 40 of those lines is just uh, logging, or, an ex or actually, 43 of those lines are just example delegate functions. But in order to make a UI scene my little system, you uh, extend AB UI scene and then uh, you can go ahead and make any variables you want. I just added a, a variable or a list box so I can cache access to it so I don't have to keep calling up the, uh, or keep looking for this list box in the UI scene scene element collection. All right, so that said, I'm gonna have two local variables here. Come on, this list box. It gives me three UI elements I'm gonna be implementing here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Call the uh, the initialize function in the uh, in the base class, and this initialize here it's it's not the same initialize as in the traditional UI scene. It's called after all that stuff. Long story, but you can every time uh, you want to set up some new stuff in there, you just you want to use the uh, the initialize function that's declared in AB UI scene, which extends from object. Fun stuff, right? All right, so uh, yeah, declaring deriving from object. This is how we're handling all our UI scene stuff. We're not even touching UI root things like that. Alright, so I'm gonna call this event here, and uh, this tells, hey, let's initialize our scene or whatever. Because this is just a list book example, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add a rectangle element that I have created. Um, set bound 0, 0, 10, 24, 7, 6, 8. That's just a uh, full size. Everything's based on the 1024 system, similar to UI scenes, but uh, everything is resolution independent. I'll show an example of that in a second. All right, so that was not what I meant to do. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and add this uh, new element to our screen, uh, our scene elements. Once again, that's declared up in ABUI scene, and that's just an array of UI elements, also declared from objects. All right, so now we have the list box. This is the very important stuff here. So uh, we have our rectangle, background rectangle, list box. So, uh, first, we're just declaring our list box. I'm going to find a way to clean up this constructor type thing. Set bounds. It's just setting its position with type. You know, very very simple. And uh, here's where we add our list box fields. And this is, uh, it takes only three parameters here. Can take four. Uh, the first three are the field name, if it's visible or not, and its size. Oops. And you can think of the size like, as like a percentage. It's like a ratio compared to the other size. And this is 40% of the width of the whole list box, either 20%. If you change this to 0.5, log will try to take up 50%, but it won't take up 50% because these are asking for 60%. Basically, if you go over 100%, the, uh, your widths are going to be normalized and still going to remain the, uh, they're going to keep the ratios to each other, but not so much the actual to percentage. So you can think of these as more like the ratio of widths, not the actual percentage or anything, it's just ratios, because that allows for resolution scaling and things like that really easily. All right, not shown here, but really simple. 
and you can add fields at any time. It's completely uh, at runtime. There's no there's no need to do it just an initialize. You can do it anywhere. And yeah, in fact, uh, you can even reorder fields, but I'm going to that later. All right, so on command, every list box has an on command delegate. In fact, every ABUI clickable or any any element that, in, that implements a clickable interface, see, really simple, has an on command delegate and an on click. Now, for buttons, these are pretty much the same thing. On click, you're going to pretty much end up running on command. But for a list box, on click is actually doing something like this. Go ahead and open up game again. Go ahead and open up my list box sample. On click is uh, selecting an item. Now, if you double click an item, that is actually running on command for the list box because that's when I want to actually execute something. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my logs. This is my log from, oh, I had to close this first, I guess. I'm going to close this. I'm going to redo my log. All right. So uh, as you can see, that's my the selected text. Selected item 18838. That's the uh, the selected item in my list box that I double clicked. And that's that's the list box's do command. This here is a log from the, uh, the on click. Selecting an item in the list box. Pretty cool. All right. So with that said, uh, Back to our code, back to our list box. Uh, the on command delegate is just doesn't return anything. Takes an optional integer. If you look at a uh, list box log selection, I made this long function with all this ifs and stuff. That's that's no long version of this video. I just remade this, or I'm remaking this video just so it's under 10 minutes, so it'll fit on YouTube. But yeah, there's a longer version on my site. Yeah, good stuff. All right, so that's that. Uh, uh, you can also use this. Both of these are fun. Will work just fine in that. Now, then we'll just add that to our scene elements because that keeps it updated. Everything it's like adding a component to a stack match, whatever. We have a title text, you know, not just the thing on the top left that you see that says list box example. Title text or the text element has a lot of cool things. Like you can have it, uh, you can change how it fits into a certain bounding box and different things like that. Oh yeah, also all these elements have base properties like colors and stuff that you can change and. And all kinds of cool stuff. Now, uh, we end this initialize with a fill box with data, and that just means filling the list box with run data. And as you can see, uh, you add, there's a few ways to add data to the list box. You can either add an array of strings, and you can get a, you, you can either get an array, of, or you can either make your own array of strings, or you can actually do something which I should be showing off here is, uh, oops, wrong button. Um, every list box has a the hell. Every list box has a function called get list item or get where the what did I name it? Get template. There we go. Get template item data. And this uh, this function basically retrieves an empty retrieves an empty array of strings that corresponds to the exact uh, structure of your list. Uh, so if you have eight fields, this will return an array of string with eight fields, things like that. And there's also a get item, which actually returns an item structure as opposed to an array of strings, but that's all implementation stuff. That it's, it's not, it's beyond the scope of this little video here. It's pretty cool stuff though. And, but for me, I'm just creating that thing manually because I need the num fields to loop through anyway. So. And see, as you can see, I'm just making random integer strings because that's really easy to do. And then at the end of once every array of string is set, I just add that array of strings to uh, my list box by calling add item by data. Data is usually an array of strings, and add item is usually a structure or a list item structure. And that's declared in list box. Go ahead, open up list box. Where hmm, I need to update this stupid tree thing. All right, so list box, list box, maybe list box. This guy lots of cool stuff. Um, yeah, I did a very bad memory management, I guess, but I want to be porting this to C plus plus anyway, so uh, I'll fix it up there. But because I, I can't do multi-dimensional arrays in Unreal script, so kind of did it myself. All right, so uh, yeah, um, we have a structure here, uh, list item, and that's just an array of strings. Go figure it. Right? All right, so uh, that's a list box example.